Hello. Did you miss me? <laughs> if you clicked on this video, I am genuinely surprised. I didn't expect anyone to really like this. I don't expect anyone to really want to take the time to watch this if they see it in their feed. Because um, books are not a very popular or common thing anymore. I barely see kids reading. I think before I started recording, I read something that's like less than 20% of kids read for pleasure anymore. That's even kind of like magazines or uh, nonfiction or even articles. Just no one reads for pleasure anymore. Because everything is just like technology and visual based, you know, YouTube, TikTok, TV shows, media. That's just where all of our attention goes for entertainment. Basically, social media has kind of capsized on that. And, you know, I don't blame people for liking it. I mean, I'm making a career out of making videos and media and everything, and it's nice. I, I love it a lot. There's a lot that you can do with it. But it is sad that no one really gives literature a shot anymore. I talk to people about it all the time, and they're like, well, I, you know, I don't have time to read, or I'm just not like a book person. When you definitely do have time to read if you have time to scroll through TikTok or whenever you're at school and you know you are in between classes or in study hall instead of scrolling through TikTok you can just pick up a book and read something and really get into it and if you say you're not a book person you know maybe you aren't but I feel like you haven't really tried to read or really give it a shot you know you can't just read like a chapter of a book be like oh that was kind of boring and then just call yourself not a book person you know it takes time to get into things it takes time to let something grow on you I doubt anyone watching this who doesn't read will probably go and read after this. Maybe not. Maybe this will convince you. Maybe I'll show you some cool books that you're interested in. But that's my two cents. I think reading should be more available. I think there's a lot more a book can do than just a screen. I think it can immerse you a lot more. It's a lot more, you know, you feel a lot more satisfied and accomplished after finishing a book than finishing a video. And it's just, it's not the same. It's not the same experience. So I'm going to share some books that I've read recently that got me back into reading because I took like a couple month hiatus to do stuff because I was busy and I was making videos and I didn't really have the time but I got back into it and I'm feeling passionate about this and I want to share it and have more of a laid back video than what I normally make. The first book that I read to get back into reading was Through the Looking Glass, the uh, Alice in Wonderland follow-up. I have the first book up here actually. It's this really cool hardcover I got off of Amazon. It's illustrated by, I think, a girl named like Anna Bond. Yeah, illustrated by Anna Bond, and the whole book has really beautiful illustrations. It's super cool, just throughout the entire thing. And I got this because I wanted like, I wanted a cool, cool book when I first started reading. And this was the book that I went with. It's super cool. And I really liked the story, even though it's a kid's book, it's kind of like, it's kind of adult at the same time. It's an easy read. It's like, you know, older English because it came out a while ago, but I thought it was a really cool story. And I wanted to get the follow up because I heard it was longer and more in depth and I really enjoyed this. This is a limited edition copy that I got off Amazon. There's only like a thousand of these made. I'm pretty sure I got like the first copy of it too. It's got all the original illustrations. It's super cool and I wanted to read it because it's something simple uh, to get myself back into it. And the Alice in Wonderland story, if you've seen the movies or anything, or even read the book, it's surprisingly like psychedelic and it's based off of like a child's imagination because it's very, you know, choppy and weird and funky and funny. And that's why I liked reading them. It was an easy read. It was very trippy at times, I guess is a good word that you could use to say it. And uh, the characters in it are just really cool. And like the morals of the people are all really funny. Through the Looking Glass has like this um, really cool concept where everything's kind of reversed from what you typically expect since it's through a looking glass mirrors are reflected so the whole world's kind of backwards and weird which was a really cool spin and uh, I won't spoil too much but like the heart of the book you know it has other things sprinkled in but it's kind of like set up like a chessboard that's like the whole concept is that she's moving through these lands but it's built like chess and the characters are based around that and it's really cool it's definitely something good and easy to get into and something very enjoyable to read so i highly recommend it if you want to get back into reading and want something simple it's cool it's a classic and pretty awesome after that i read the ichabog by jk rowling um, i'm sure you know who jk rowling is the author of the harry potter books um, i picked this up at walmart because i saw it and i thought the cover just looked really cool and um, i didn't know what to expect i'm pretty sure it's her first like 
novel length after the Harry Potter books. And um, it wasn't what I was expecting. A really cool part about it is that it has um, all the illustrations in the book are by kids that submitted them. This was written over quarantine and she wanted a way to like show off kids art and publish them in it. It gives all their names and a little something about them, which I thought was really cool. The illustrations were impressive for kids of their age, so. The book itself, I really wanna go without spoilers, but it took a lot of turns that I wasn't expecting. I thought it was gonna be something, then it flipped it around and it was something else, and it turned out to be a lot more adult than I expected. I feel like there's definitely a way for kids to enjoy it because it was directed at kids, but has a lot of very adult underlying tones to it. Like um, concepts like government and how much we allow the government to control our personal lives and our thoughts and our beliefs was a really big part of it. But it also kept a very fantasy element throughout the whole thing that was really solid and really realistic. It took like a typical fantasy world and made it realistic, which I thought was awesome. Really good book, I recommend it. If you want something good to get into, if you've ever read Harry Potter, I feel like you know, you'll know you appreciate the writing style. And I thought it was really cool that she let all those kids get some attention in like a, in a very popular book. Really cool though, I recommend, check it out. The next book I read was The Stranger by Albert Camus, 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 I don't really know, I'm pretty sure it's Camus. I saw a TikToker that I really like called like Baron Ryan, I think's his name. I saw him make a TikTok talking about this. And then in one of PewDiePie's like newest book reviews, he talked about it too. And I was just really interested in what it is. It's really short. I think it's like, well, 100 something pages, 123 pages, really short, but it surprisingly good, surprisingly good. I think it got a lot of the praise it deserves. He's a really popular author that I hadn't heard of till this book. Uh, I don't even know where to start with this thing. The writing style in it is very, like at the beginning, very choppy and dry, but it works. It's very like direct, which kind of matches the character in this book's entire personality. The whole thing is like following his basic day-to-day -day life and things that have happened to him that kind of all build to something. Like everything in the book seems kind of pointless, but it all builds to the end which ugh, I can't spoil it, but it's really cool. The character's mentality, I think is the reason that this book is so popular, like his mentality and how it ties in with the things that happen. He's a very, I guess you could say cold person, maybe describe him as like a nihilist. He thinks that emotions are kind of useless. He has like an, it is what it is mentality and nothing matters mentality, which is something that's pretty common now. You know, the whole thing of like, we're all gonna die one day, it doesn't matter. But I think this book shows how that mentality can be dangerous and how it can ruin your quality of life. At least that's the way I saw it. And um, it raises a lot of questions of morality and surprisingly the justice system. Um, this wasn't set in America. It's set, I think, like somewhere in North Africa. It's a really cool look at like the psychology of people, I think. And it's a lot more prominent now, I think, this book is than before in history because that mentality is becoming really popular. It's cool though, it's a really quick read. It'd be a really good way to get back into reading or get into reading in general if you want something. Literally 100 pages, I'm sure you can manage 10 pages a day, slam it out in like 10 days. It's, I think, I think it's worth a read. I was pleasantly surprised with it and I really liked the character, even though he was kind of a piece of shit. The notes from the end of everything, I got this book because of a YouTuber I really like called Pursuit of Wonder. He's a very, um, I don't know, his videos are weird to describe, but it's very in-depth looks at basically everything in the universe. And I really wanted to get his book and see what it would be. It's a really short book too. What is it? I don't even think it's like a hundred pages, 101 pages, but there's only literally one sentence on the last page. It's really good. It follows this guy who gets diagnosed with cancer and it's kind of his last bits of life he writes and these are like the notes from like you know the end of his life what his thoughts are what he thinks and a lot of his philosophies on life and this book basically covers like almost every aspect of life in just a hundred pages because he keeps his thoughts short sweet but at the same time it also connects with his journey of death and the way he views the world on death's doorstep which i i loved i thought it was really great and a lot of the philosophy and ideas shared in this book are 
really similar to my own and match my own in a lot of ways and I feel like a lot of people could relate to it. I really think it's a book everyone should read and I feel like it'll give you a really different outlook on life. Ugh, I, I just love this book so much. I still think it's one of my favorites like in the world. It has a lot of really great sections. It talks about like everything, everything. I can't spoil it. It's definitely worth the time if you want something that's like that you feel like you'll learn from. If you don't want to read, just to, like go through a work of fiction. If you want to learn something and also be a part of a work of fiction, it's a really good book to do that. And it's really short, so you'll be able to get it done super fast. Oh, I loved it. I loved it so much. This book is amazing. It's A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I'm pretty sure they made a film out of it, but I think the book obviously does a lot better of a job of telling the story. You know, most books are better than the film. You know, people aren't lying when they say that. Jim K did the illustrations in this, and they're really cool. Like throughout the writing, I think like in the book it has them, but even on pages with text, like it's mixed in, which makes for a really cool experience when you're reading it. It kind of brings the whole thing to life. It uh, follows this kid named Connor and struggles in his life. He's a really young kid and um, there's this monster that visits him and uh, changes his life or his outlook on life. Oh, that's so cool. I don't know. I, I, I love this book a lot and it's hard not to say anything without giving it away, but the way the book ties in together and the message behind it was really beautiful. It's a super sad book but it is amazing. This is one of my favorite books of all time easily. I read this a while ago and I might even reread it. I forgot how much I love this book. This is a beautiful book to get and I recommend getting the hardcover if you can with these illustrations because it made the reading experience that much better. This is The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. One of the uh, people I watched on YouTube, a book YouTuber, highly recommended this book. I got it, the hardcover of course. I love collecting books so I try to get the nicest I can. It follows a China rabbit named Edward. It, it follows his journey through, I guess, a bunch of different people's lives, all the people that come in contact with Edward and then own him because he's lost by this little girl that owns him originally. It goes really deep and gets super sad. I think I started tearing up at one point. I know over a book, it's hard to believe, but it's a really beautiful story. And I think all the places he goes and the people he meets gives a really good look at a bunch of different sides of people and people's lives and i think just the concept was done super well and i think all the places he goes were done really well also the writing is also simple so it's easily digestible oh i, re I read it in one night when the power went out at my house because i just wanted something to read so i turned on a little lantern and i read this book and i loved every page of it so this is also a really good one if you want to get back into reading i highly recommend it simple story I loved it. At the moment though, I'm eating through one of Stephen King's new books, The Institute. This came out like, I don't know, before COVID, a year ago. And I got it like a year ago, but it sat shelved because I just didn't touch it because it's a really long book. It's like 500 pages. I've read a lot of Stephen King stuff before. I think I read the full uncut version of The Stand. I don't know if you can see it up there. Longest book I've ever read, like 1200 pages, super good. I read Misery, I loved Misery. I think he definitely earns the praise that he gets around his name. And I haven't gotten very far in this book. What am I like, 113 pages into it. The beginning was pretty confusing. I didn't know what was happening, but it was still like an interesting story. I'm kind of interested to see how it ties together, but it follows this kid. He's like exceptionally smart. And in the middle of the night, these people break into his house and kidnap him. He ends up in this place called the Institute and he wakes up like in a room that's identical to his, but with minor changes. And it kind of follows his journey, figuring out what the Institute is. And um, every kid here has like a power that they explain. There's two kinds. And that's all I really know so far. I'm really interested to see where it goes. It's super cool. I haven't been excited about a book the way I am about this one, because it's been set up so well to be something super cool. And I feel like Stephen King will kill it. I recommend this book too, I think. I know I haven't finished it yet, but that's where I'm at with this one. But yeah, thank you for letting me rant about books for a while. Um, I'll put links to like Amazon links to all these books in the description if you want to check them out. And uh, I'll put some of my favorite book YouTubers in the description to shout them out. Um, thanks for taking the time. If you made it to the end, I'm genuinely impressed. You're a true fan and I love you. Thanks for letting me be myself for a while. And 
read more books. It's worth it. It's worth the time. It's wonderful. Check them out. And uh, yeah, thank you. I love you all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, bye.